Ten years ago, I had this idea. What if I let technology change me, and I live by the pace and change of technology? So the idea to me was a little bit scary, letting go of a certain perspective and living a different perspective that is driven by new emerging technologies. But I also thought that it was inevitable. And if you look at and think about mankind and our progress, we have been moving forward thanks to new tools and technologies. So it is inevitable that the emerging technologies that we are being introduced to, the phone, for example, and also drones and other types of technologies, will change and shift us in different ways. I wanted to explore the inevitable and start living a life shifting from things and atoms to living only in the cloud and being, having my life powered by the cloud. So I started slowly as the digital services came around, music and movies, starting to let go of the physical objects of movies and music. So I let go of the albums and the CDs and the DVDs, and I started to use services online. And then the iPhone came around, and the Kindle came around, and that gave me opportunities to switch even more things. So I started to shift all my books, got rid of all the books that I had, the physical books, and only started reading books via the Kindle. And slowly I felt that I was shifting towards being more, quote unquote, digital in my way. But I, I decided that I was going to put my trust into this change, into this shift, into the idea that as human beings, we develop technology to make our lives simpler and better. And I really believed in that idea. But the really big change happened when Airbnb and Uber came around and suddenly offering living and transportation as a service. That to me was absolutely mind-blowing. From going from ownership to access, I can actually now just subscribe to living as a service. I could subscribe to transportation as a service. I actually didn't need anything except for my, the phone that I have in my pocket. So I decided to let go of my last things, my house, my car, my clothes, and explore how it is to live completely powered by the cloud. So I packed a bag, this blue bag, the only thing I have and own in life to date, uh, with a bunch of tech, and I headed off to England to go to cooking school. After a couple of days, I realized that, well, Maybe close is not such a bad thing. <laughs> How do I solve this? I'm in the countryside. So one evening, I packed up my clothes, I put on a towel, I walked down to the reception, and it was exactly at the time when everyone is checking in. <laughs> so I stood there naked except for the towel and asked the receptionist, could you please wash these for me? They're a little bit smelly and dirty and I need to go to cooking school tomorrow. And the amazing thing happened was that she said, yes. She said, of course, we'll put them outside of your room in the next morning. And I thought, well, this is working. The cloud is working fantastically. I don't need anything. <laughs> the, that lesson taught me that, well, I need a couple more things. So I bought a couple of t-shirts and some extra underwear to have just in case I, I didn't run into a really friendly receptionist. <laughs> but after three years now that I've been living completely powered by the cloud and just switching my way of thinking, it has also changed the way I'm seeing the world. I feel much more kind, much more detached from judgment. I feel that I'm much more, I can belong in the world without borders and boundaries. I've learned a new way of thinking. I feel that I understand the dynamics of the change that's happening. I no longer feel that change is happening too quickly because I'm moving in the pace of this change. And it's a big relief to switch from having to completely just being. Life becomes really, really simple. But I had to take that extra step just to move into this space of completely trusting everything that it works. And it doesn't always work. 
but it works good enough that I've actually been able to power my life this way. And change and technologies does something really interesting to us, to humanity. The first thing it does is that it shifts uh, in a way that it allows us to see the world and be in the world differently. It also is one directional, so that it's, once you shift it, it's really hard to get back. If you think about not leaving your home or leaving your iPhone at home, most of you would think that would be an impossible uh, task, just living without your iPhone. Just try that for a day, leave your iPhone at home, and you will experience a lot of anxiety. Because that's, <laughs> that's our remote control for our lives. But I also realized that through this experience, there was a couple of big issues uh, that humanity has been pondering and thinking about over the past thousand years that our best philosophers have been thinking about and trying to define as every new age been progressing. And that is, what is a home? What are relationships? And what is work? And I didn't really think about those when I started this journey, but I was sort of forced to, by using and building a life around this cloud and around this technology, to become really, really human and start thinking about what, what are those things? If a home is not a physical location, what is it? If relationships are no longer the people in a close surrounding or maybe treasured memories, what are they? And if work is no longer a place that I'm going to, but more of a definition of my own uniqueness, then who am I? So this journey that started, maybe a little bit geeky, maybe a little bit crazy, maybe a little bit techy, quickly moved me into a space of humanity and started to make me think about what does it mean to be a human being in the 21st century. And I, I realized that home is something that I can create and facilitate anywhere. But when I ventured out in the world with this idealistic idea of belonging anywhere, I was of, often challenged. I realized it was a provocation of generations of belief systems that have divided us into different people and different nations and different neighborhoods and different families. Separation instead of uniting us. And every time I was asked where I'm from, and I still do that, I refuse to answer. W once there was some sort of a prodding, I made it up. And to date I've been born in Buenos Aires, in San Francisco, Shanghai, in New York, and in Mexico City. I just pick and choose. Sometimes the combination becomes a little bit awkward and a new conversation starts. But the interesting thing to me is that people seem to be more interested in the origin of my being than the being and becoming of my being. And that was something that technology enabled to me to really focus on being and becoming and being present in this world. So when I started to think about relationships, and the way that we all connected, both in a universal way, but also through the internet and through digital devices, we are in reality, and will be over time, connected to anyone in the world. So I have everyone in the world on digital speed dial in real time. I can access any person in the world from this stage via my mobile phone. And that changes things, that shifts things. That means that the conversations I'm having with different people in the world are as important as grabbing a beer with a friend. And, and those, two, those two different ways of interacting is shifting the way that we are operating in the world. And I realized that a friendship, that there are no strangers and there are only friends in this world because there are no borders or no boundaries. And i only setting the boundaries to, uh, for myself and for my own life. And I can actually shift those and by, by way of seeing things differently of operating and letting me myself be empowered by this cloud, the world is just a, this global amazing place with all these cool people doing a bunch of different things. Some may be straying off and doing a little bit of weird things and some doing really, really cool things. But we're all connected. And from that perspective, suddenly I have to redefine friendship. The friendship can be like the guy Alessandro that I met in Mexico City last week and we sat down and we had an amazing day and we created a really, really, really deep connection during just a couple of hours. Just because I let go of the resistance of trying to 
categorize him or organize him from the perspective of past or the future, only focusing on the present. And then if you look at work, work as, as most of us do, or some of us do, is a location. We go to work. It's, it's even in our vernacular how we operate and how, we, how, we, uh, how our relationship to work works. But when we all connected in a network, we have the opportunity to actually focusing on the things that we love, on the things that really matters to us, because the whole world is there as a market for the things that we can bring to the world. So suddenly, by letting go of all these physical things and physical limitations and living in a world that's completely unlimited, I can now create a life that is very different and very human. So I actually ended up, by thinking about technologies, I ended up realizing that I'm rediscovering and discovering what it is to be a human being in the 21st century. And by living the future, I've learned to rediscover the simplicity of the past, that home is where your heart is, relationships are about being, being there, and work should really be about the things that you love to do. Thank you.